Uh, I'm, as, I, as it was mentioned, I'm Tarsiza from the, Institute of, the Swiss Institute of Bioinformatics. Uh, this work was done in collaboration with the BSF uh, company. It's a leading company in the crop science uh, protection industry. Um, I'll try to be brief because I think I'm stepping between you and the cough break. Um, then, yeah, our work was entitled like Federating and Curing Heterogeneous and Distributed Web APIs and Triple Stores. First, we started with a motivation question that we have from a BSF research, actually, that was studying the OMT2 gene in wheat. He wanted to know the protein-protein interactions uh, of its orthologs in, in rice. Essential orthologs are corresponding gene different species. Um, to summarize. Um, then, uh, to answer this kind of complex question, then often we need to combine the scattered data at BSF and also in, in web. Uh, depending on the data source that you're going to use. In this case, could be, for example, for the protein protein interaction, the string database, and for the ontology information, could be the OMA database. By doing that, you can actually derive new insights and so on. Uh, then, before starting to talk about our approach, how we implemented it at uh, BSF and also uh, at some extent also at SIB, uh, the data integration and interpreter approach could be divided in two types. Decentralized approach and decentralized ones. Like for example, here I mentioned like the weak data, the centralized one, and intermine it's kind of a data warehouse approach. And uh, other approach, such as the one that I will present, is a decentralized one. That depending on the case, one could be better than another one to to be applied. In our case, I will explain why we decided to use a decentralized approach for this project with BSF. Then, uh, why that? Because currently at BSF. The data is quite fragmented. It's like a, a big company, international. Uh, that they have different access modes to the data because they are being stored in different kind of data store. Depends on the data producer. Uh, depending on the legacy systems that you've been used. Now, sometimes could be a new company that's integrated in in the at BSF, for example. Then it's quite heterogeneous. Then essentially, for example, one of the the, the ways to access the data is through web APIs such as REST APIs. Uh, or structured query line like SQL could be, or Spark, and so on, um, and uh, all some programming specific language that provides some APIs, or other kind of the graph database such as Neo4j and so on. Then uh, the work here is like how you, if you want to integrate this data, we have to somehow at some point homogenize uh, the way in this case, more specifically, the way that you access the data, like to have a kind of the same syntax and so on. Then to achieve this kind of a, a data integration that we do here is a, a data integration on the fly. This is done during the query execution time because we want to keep the data as it is from the data provider, the data sources, because uh, one of the reasons of that is that as you as you heard about like today, about the Uber ontology, it could take one decade to try to, or more depending on the, the subject, to harmonize and reconcile and so on. Then uh, in, the, in this specific uh, case here, since you have different knowledge domain, could be even complicated to get everybody agree. And as a computer scientist, actually, uh, for me, it's more easy to socialize uh, computer system than people to take <laughs> to agree them, because quite hard to get people at some times to agree when they, when they are from different backgrounds and uh, dealing with different knowledge domains. Then here, then we, we push this problem to the technology to try to solve it. Of course, it'd be not perfect, but uh, it's a first start um, to have like a quick solution. Then this seamless integration is, is done kind of like a, we we focus on the web APIs that's provided by different data producers. Then we make these uh, web APIs accessible through a kind of a virtual knowledge graph by applying technology that you have show in the next slide. Uh, then essentially the architecture that we implemented there we have like three, think as three layers, an application layer that could be a keyword search engine such as Biosoda, the suited query interface that essentially you're gonna have the all different kind of uh, ways to access the data homogenized. In this case, we homogenize by using the Sparkle query language. Um, and uh, for the, in the data store layer, that's where actually the data it is. And also uh, depending on the, on the data source to make it possible to be accessible to uh, knowledge graph actually is also accessible through the Spark query language. At the end, we 
had also, if there is not available at BSF being used because there's some internal ontologies that they have developed, or if there is none available and so on, we have to develop it. For example, in the case of the string database to provide access to the data that's uh, retrieved by the web APIs, we develop an um, ontology specifically as a data schema to structure this data and make it accessible through um, the Spark or query language. And essentially to do that, we use a bunch of technologies, but more specifically for the for the making the web APIs accessible through uh, Spark or query language, we use what we call Spark or microservice actually. Then essentially what happens, uh, we have these, these different functions provide, for example, for, from the string database, uh, like get function interaction network, get physical interaction network, each one is different web API. And then those functions are mapped into a, a virtual graph. Uh, I will show how this, uh, how the uh, mapping looks like in the next slide. But essentially here, what's the powerful here to, in this situation for solving like semantic uh, heterogeneity issues is, is that it's quite flexible because since you can define it through the mappings, you're not like materializing the data. You can, for example, if you have different ontologies that you want to be able to have your data accessible, like a, you have a gene concept in different ontologies and then you want to make this gene harmonized like a, to be accessible, then you could do a, two mappings, for example, that you populate your class gene, for example. Uh, and uh, more specifically here for this project with BSF, we always thought to reuse ontology patterns that are already in use for the native triple stores, for example, they have the OMA data database there, and they have, for example, a concept uh, orthogene that calls gene actually, then we, we have mappings to this concept like gene and, and, and also the protein and so on to make possible also to interpret easily with the string database, for example. Then uh, I will not go into details about the, the string uh, ontology, uh, but the, the link is there that you can access uh, to see uh, how it was. This ontology can be, all, of course, extended and adapted to other protein-protein interaction uh, data sources. Then this is how it looks like a, a mapping. Essentially, by using the Spark on Microservice uh, met, uh, tool, method, uh, we, the maps are defined as a, a constructed query form. Then essentially here, uh, this, this is a simple example of one of the uh, web API functions that have string database for getting the versioning. Then essentially, these uh, JSON response are converted on the fly based on this mapping into uh, the triples that you, be, that you construct the graph actually. Then we, in this case, I have stable address to be mapped into stable address and so on. And, uh, and here, the flex, you can see the flexibility also, for example, you could provide the same uh, information string version as a label as well at the same time. Then if another ontology, let's suppose that you're using label for describing like a, a version, then you could use the same property. Uh, then coming back to the question, then essentially for this question, uh, the answer would be this commented gene uh, in RICE. Uh, and then this is like the network of, uh, of interactions. Then for this specific example, we have the query, this query eight actually that combined these different data sources. It took like a, a, around one second in average. And then more details about the query evaluation since I don't have much time. Uh, it is available here as well in this link, this percent URL. Then to conclude, uh, essentially here, what we did is to build um, a system uh, a federated data uh, integration architecture that uh, we we always sought to uh, preserve the data source as they are and try to uh, harmonize it at, uh, at the query execution layer, actually, and also through uh, semantic web technologies, for example, to make this virtual graph harmonized with the existing ones, like the native uh, triple star that are being used at BSF. Then as future works actually that we think about is uh, an, using another approach to try to access this web API data uh, through, through other kind of technologies, non-commission commission. Um, and another thing that I, I forgot to mention is that the interest of integrating these web APIs there is because most of the time the user is interested in the processed data that's provided by these web APIs. They need to be quite complicated to get the information if you are also dealing 
directly with the origin with the original data source, like for example, our relational database that some uh, group at BSF is uh, working on. Okay, then this is all for my talk. Then we can take a cough break now and questions maybe. Thank you. I think there is a. Okay, now I have to remember exactly the question. <laughs> uh, uh, I would say, like, the summary is how we deal with uh, inconsistencies when integrated in uh, different uh, data sources, in this case, like, it could be also different ontologies that is being used by these different data sources and so on. Then, yeah, sh the short answer is that, yeah, of, of course, the, it's depending on the, the situation, uh, if it is like about the same domain of knowledge, often could be easier to deal with the inconsistencies once it's found an agreement between these the stakeholders or the data source that you want to, to homogenize. But I also think that when it's different, the completely heterogeneous like uh, knowledge domains that, for example, we are talking about like gene expression and uh, ontology, uh, or, or protein protein interaction then at some point like some concepts could be like a kind of like semantic relaxation if you want to integrate them uh, in this case for example like uh, it doesn't make sense to talk about uh, um, in the case of ontology for example it could make sense to have a semantic relax relaxation about protein and uh, gene because to infer the ontology relation many of the methods that we have nowadays work at the protein level and then essentially, if you want to integrate this ontology database, you have to deal with this kind of like a, a situation. Then I would say that in this case, it would be hard to have like a, a standard saying, okay, you have to go to, into this granularity, but when it's the same knowledge domain, I would say that the best option is always like, a, in my opinion at least, uh, to standardize it as much as possible. I hope that I could answer the question more or less. <laughs> 